the census. Uh, I just want to take a second to remind my friend that the Trump administration lost uh, its battle to paste a citizenship question last minute onto the census in the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court has already rejected their efforts to uh, post graffiti all over the census. Look, um, it's difficult enough in a normal year to conduct a census of all American people. It's infinitely harder in the middle of a pandemic. And the intricate plans and military-like schedule that, was a, that were a decade in the making have been completely upended by this out-of-control coronavirus crisis and the lethal incompetence and indifference of the Trump administration, thereby creating an unprecedented challenge for the Bureau. Despite the Herculean effort of an army of enumerators, there's still a shocking amount left to do uh, to meet the constitutional mandate. As of yesterday, at least 15 percent of households in 10 different states had not been counted. Those states include Florida, North Carolina, New Mexico, South Carolina, Louisiana, Arizona, Mississippi, Montana, and Georgia. At the bottom of that list is Alabama, where the Bureau still has not enumerated 20 percent of the households. That doesn't seem like a much, perhaps, but if 15 to 20 percent of people in all those states aren't counted, more than 12 million Americans will be missed. The threat of an inaccurate account is no more of a blue state problem than COVID-19 is a blue state problem. Of those 10 states that are at the bottom of the barrel in enumeration, seven have Republicans representing them on this very committee. 65% of the House seats in those 10 states are held by Republicans, and more than half of those states have all Republican delegations in the Senate. This is a problem not for blue states or for red states, but for the people of the United States. The census is important for two main things, money and power. If you don't care about money or power, well, don't worry about the census. But if you do, you better pay attention. I've got the honor of serving on the select subcommittee on the coronavirus crisis. Many people don't realize how crucial the census is to our COVID-19 response and the ability of governments to meet the needs of the people. The CARES Act, which established the $150 billion coronavirus relief fund, required that the money be distributed to states based on census population data. Countless studies tracking the prevalence of the disease in the country have relied on census tract data, and our fine-grained understanding of the disproportionate impact on communities of color across America is also based on census data. The census is used to determine where to build hospitals. It will help businesses trying to revitalize our economy determine where to set up shop, and it'll help cities and counties determine where to run bus routes and build roads that will help carry workers and consumers to their businesses. The census cannot become a hostage once again to a political fight perpetrated by this administration and their allies in Congress. It is foundational to the American constitutional system and to representative democracy. It will only grow in importance as we use the data to fight the pandemic and rebuild our devastated economy. This is not the time to rush things in the interests of some partisan advantage. It is time to get it right. The pandemic has not only made the count itself harder, it has made post-enumeration data integrity even more compelling and essential. In a normal year, the Bureau counts everyone as close to April 1 as possible. But this year, the count has been stretched out over many months, six or seven months. That's six or seven months where people have scattered and moved around the country. College students have abandoned their dorms to go home. Laid off workers have consolidated households or moved in with families. Medical professionals shuffled around the nation to hot spots. Essential workers quarantined themselves away from vulnerable family members. Loved ones who would have been counted on April 1 sadly succumbed to the disease before their household was enumerated. And I need not remind my colleagues, we have lost more than 190,000 Americans to this nightmare. The chances seem higher than ever before that a lot of people are gonna be missed, while others may be double counted. This calls for a more comprehensive, robust, and elongated post-enumeration data review process. But instead, the Bureau has cut its data processing schedule by 40% from 150 days to around 90 days. The Bureau knows this is not enough time. We all know it's not enough time. The Bureau has been asking for an extension since April, when it first concluded that it couldn't meet the current statutory redistricting and enforcement deadlines while still delivering the highest quality count. The House has already agreed to this common sense plan, but the HEROES Act, which granted the extension that the administration itself requested, still is not law because of the inaction of the Senate. 
This has left the Bureau scrambling and caused the agency to abandon its carefully crafted data processing schedule for a seat of the pants plan cobbled together in a couple of days. This is not how an efficient modern government operates. This is what happens in failed states, not functioning democracies. Every census expert, including the Bureau itself, agrees that a rushed census is untenable and unsustainable and inconsistent with the Constitution. I call upon my GOP colleagues to give the Bureau the time it says it needs to do the census right in 2020. I don't believe anyone here wants their constituents to go uncounted. Nobody wants their constituents to be missed. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. Let's pass this indispensable and common sense extension and make sure that we have a comprehensive, full and accurate census in 2020. We'll have to live with the results of it for a decade. And if 2020 has taught us anything by now, it's that people's lives, our economy and our democracy depend on getting things right the first time. So let's not hide the truth. Let's not bury the truth. Let's recognize it and let's act accordingly. With that, I yield back to you, Madam Chair, and thank you for the time.